Hey everybody, it's Fall of Bryce. Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night Asked and Answered. Uh, the, the, we got a fun question tonight. It's the question is, um, what is the Q source or uh, our Q gospel? Maybe uh, maybe a lot of you have never never heard of that before, but the question is, what what is the Q source? So, so here's the deal. If you open up your Bible and you look at Matthew, Mark, and Luke side by side, you'll see that they they have a lot of things that they say that are that are the same. <laughs> that are some things that are exactly the same, and some and some things that are very similar. That's Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And for that reason, those three Gospels are called the Synoptic Gospels. You might have heard that term before, Synoptic Gospels. What, is it, what does that mean? Well, soon is a, a means together. Optic means to look, you know, like your optic nerve or your ophthalmologist or whatever. And so to soon optic, synoptic means to look at together. So when you look at the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, especially if you look at them in Greek, you'll see that obviously um, they were they were using one another in some fashion or another as source material. Like somebody copied from somebody in the writing of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Now, that shouldn't surprise us because Luke actually tells us that he did that. At the very beginning, he says something like this, uh, as many have tried to compile a narrative, O excellent Theophilus, of all that was said and done among us. I, Luke went to the sources and Luke found out what was the real deal and, and, and Luke wrote down his, his gospel. So we shouldn't be surprised that the Bible writers would use various sources because well, that, that's, that's right there um, in the Bible. But what, what, do, you, what do you make of um, who, who copied from whom? Okay, so this is called, this question, who copied from whom, is called the synoptic problem. Uh, or maybe better, a synoptic puzzle. Okay, so nobody, everybody thinks, that, or almost everybody, that Luke copied from Matthew and Mark. Um, because Luke tells us he copied from sources. Luke has things from Matthew and Mark. That's just pretty, pretty well established. Not, not many people disagree uh, upon that. But what about, uh, what about Matthew and Mark? Well, um, most, most scholars think that Mark wrote his gospel first. Then Matthew wrote, and then Luke wrote. I disagree with that hypothesis. I, I'm more inclined to... Um, to think that Matthew wrote first, but that's a different discussion for a different time. And uh, as my professor uh, in seminary said, Dr. Eubank, uh, unless you've looked at all the, the every line in the Synoptic Gospels all together in Greek and noted which ones uh, aligned with which ones, you can't have an opinion on the Synoptic problem. And I hope this year to have the time to go through all of them in Greek with my color pencils, um, but I have not done that yet. So according to Dr. Eubank, I, I'm not qualified to have an opinion on the synoptic problem, but I can tell you what people think. So if you think that Mark wrote first, um, and then you look at the synoptic gospels, what you're going to find is that there's a lot of things that Matthew and Luke have that are also in Mark. There are things that are in Matthew and Luke that are in Mark. Got it? Then there are some things that are only in Matthew. Some people call that special M, M for Matthew. Uh, the stuff that's only in Matthew, special M. Some stuff like the prodigal son, for example, or like the Annunciation to the Blessed Virgin Mary is only in Luke. It's not in Mark, it's not in Matthew, so there's special M. Uh, sorry, sorry, there's special L. L is for Luke. Okay, so if you... If you take the position that 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 Mark wrote first, um, even though I disagree with that position, you take the position that Mark wrote first. You'll see that there's Mark stuff, there's Matthew stuff that's not in any of the others. There's Luke stuff that's not in any of the others. Then there's this other stuff that's in Matthew and Luke, but not in Mark. In Matthew, it's in Luke, but it's not in Mark. 
So where did they get it? And German scholars came, were noticing this, and people have noticed it before then, but German scholars in the 19th or 20th century were noticing this, and they said, where did they get it? What was their source? What was Matthew and Luke's source for this stuff that they both have in common, but that's not in Mark? And they said, well, let's call it source. And the word for source in German is Kell. I think that's how you pronounce it. Q-U-E-L-L-E. -E. And so they said, we'll call it source. And it, that gets abbreviated into Q. So you got Mark, you got special Matthew, you got special Luke, and then you got Q or Kell or in English, source. This theoretical um, source material that Matthew and Luke would have both drawn upon that wasn't in Mark. Now, let me emphasize that that is completely and totally theoretical. There are no copies of Q. At least we've never found that we've never found any. Um, it, it's it's simply um, a theory uh, that some biblical scholars, actually less and less these days, but some and still probably the majority uh, of biblical scholars hold to about the solution to the uh, synoptic problem. So if you want to learn more um, about that, check out the synoptic problem. That, that, that'll be the easiest way to Google. And um, Dr. Mark Goodacre, I think his first name is Mark, G-O-O-D-A-C-R-E, Mark Goodacre, G-O-O-D-A-C-R-E, is the leading scholar, um, or at least my favorite, scholar on the uh, on the synop synop synoptic problem. I don't think he thinks Q is a real thing either. Um, but his arguments are very cogent, and um, as I remember them, it's been a while since I've since I've read his stuff. But as I remember them, they're they're pretty simple. Um, they're they're pretty. Um, you know, if you went to like like um, person who went to college um, could could pick up uh, Doctor Goodacre's stuff and read it, and and I think make sense of it pretty well. So that's. Um, that's what Q is. Q is a hypothetical source from which some biblical scholars, probably still the majority, think that Matthew and Luke got the material for their Gospels, which was not in Mark. Um, hmm. Is there anything else that we need to say about that? I think there's this, uh, just a, a point for prayer. Um, the, the writers of the Bible brought all their human resources to bear on their writing of the Bible. And, and they tell us that. There was oral tradition that they took from what people had, you know, the stories, the true stories that people had passed down. There was written tradition, the, the writings that people had passed down, and, and they put it together. And, and I don't I don't know for sure, I, I, and the church doesn't pronounce on this. I, I don't think they said like, Hey, I'm gonna get inspired by the Holy Spirit and do this. Or I, I don't think the, the like 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 the angel Gabriel. There's no record ever at all of the angel Gabriel appearing to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and saying, "Hey, like write this down and write it this way." And but these periods and these commas there aren't even those in the there are, those don't exist in the Greek manuscripts anyway. Um, but put these letters in this order. No, that that's not how it worked. They 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 were inspired, but they 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 knew. Because they prayed, because they lived within the within the life of the church, they prayed daily. They knew they were supposed to write, and and I, I don't know if they knew I, I, that they were like inspired in this special way to write scripture. But they were inspired. The author of the Bible is the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit is the primary author, and then the human authors are the secondary authors. They just they just did what they thought God was telling them to do um, within the church. And, and wow, they ended up actually being inspired by it, inspired by the Holy Spirit. That, that's like, that's pretty awesome. So thank God when you read the Bible for the human effort uh, from the human authors who chose to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. And and while God's not calling you or me to write the Bible because that, that's already done, there's no more Bible that needs to be written. He is calling you, you and me to it, respond to his inspirations and to live in his love and, and to cooperate with his mission. Um.
Um, so, so that's something by Q. That's something about sources in the Bible, and that's some practical takeaway like for our own spiritual life to cooperate um, in a different way, but uh, but similar to the writers of the Bible, the human authors of the Bible, uh, in doing God's work in the world. All right, y'all have a good night. God bless you.